I decided instead of building a permanent housing for my goats, that I would build some smaller shelters that were movable on skids. And so we put those together. I built one here a few months back just to see how it worked out. The goats love it. Just added some more goats to the herd. And so I'm going to build another one, at least maybe two more. So I thought I'd walk you through that today. So thank you for taking the time out to take a watch of this. If you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Uh, and if you like this video, hit like and share and turn on that notification bell. We greatly appreciate that as you follow us along as we learn what to do and what not to do concerning meat goat production and raising meat goats. I'm gonna build this out of basically what I've got laying around. Uh, essentially, I've got some lumber just from numerous projects most of it from teardowns, where we tore down some little outbuildings, things like that, uh, that I pulled nails out of, screws out of, some old four by four post I'm gonna use for skids. Got a few pieces of tin, different colors uh, that I'm gonna use for the wrap of the thing in metal and the roof. And basically today I'm gonna use all my cordless DeWalt tools, cordless seven and a quarter circular saw, cordless nail gun. Uh, and that's really about it. You can do it with a screw gun, you can hand nail it, you can do it any way you want to do it with a handsaw, but I've got the cordless tools, so I'm going to use them. First thing we're going to do, measure off a total of six two by four, 34 inch long pieces. Those are going to basically be the, the uh, vertical studs. And then I'm going to do a six foot bottom plate, six foot top plate, 72 inch, 72 inch, 34 inches. Uh, that's going to give an overall height of 37 inches plus the height of the four by four that's going to be mounted to three and a half inches so that's about 40 and a half inches overall uh, in the, to the top so that's how i'm going to start it out i'm going to build those frames i'm not going to trouble you with me measuring and marking i'm going to kind of speed that up and uh, get that part done and then we'll do the assembly Okay, so I've got the lumber cut for the, basically the walls, the two side walls, the six foot long walls. Got a total of six 34 inch pieces of two before, and then four six foot pieces. The bottom one is going to be pressure treated, this one here. And this is going to be the top plate here, it's just spruce. Some I had yellow pine, some I had spruce. You see I've kind of marked stud locations, real simple. One stud in the middle, 36 inches on center, and then on each end is the only place I've got studs. So we're gonna nail this together using this handy DeWalt cordless nail gun. Everything's done on a 20 volt platform. Seven and a quarter DeWalt cordless saw, cordless nail gun, and a fantastic cordless fan in an effort to try to keep the gnats and mosquitoes off of me. The humidity is super high today. So watch us if we get it framed up. All right, so real quick, gonna try to get this thing framed up. Uh, should take but a few minutes. And then we'll move right on into what I do on the skids. I'll cut uh, radius edges, ends, radius ends, and I'll drill holes through those where I can put a rope to be able to move it around. Just hook it to the side by side, drag it around where I want it. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and assemble the outer side walls. Here's one finished outside 72 inch wall, 34 inch cut here, inch and a half, top and bottom. So that's gonna give you a total of 37 inches in height by 
72 inches long, six feet long. I'm gonna build another one real quick and then we'll move on to the skids. Keep in mind, the pressure treated side goes down. We have termites in Florida, you might not have them. Might not be a concern for you, definite concern for me. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, obviously safety glasses on. I'm going to cut a radius on the end of the four before skids just to give it a little curvature so that when I go to drag it, it doesn't dig down into the ground. Makes it slide a little easier, doesn't rut everything up. Um, you can do this with a reciprocating saw, a jigsaw, whatever you've got at your disposal. Again, it's a three and a half inch piece of timber. I kind of just have right now my cordless circular saw. So I'm gonna make do with it and cut basically a radius corner with a straight cut saw. Might not be pretty, but it's functional. So if you have goats, you probably have feed buckets or something round to make this radius design. I basically, you can see it drawn out there. I basically just take a bucket, get it about where I think I like it, make a mark. And then I try to follow that mark as best I can and to duplicate it on both ends. So I'm gonna do this on two four befores that are gonna be the outer wall skids. And we'll go from there. She says you can't cut a radius corner with a circular saw. Again, it's not absolutely beautiful, but extremely functional. All right, I've got the two six foot sidewalls built. Again, pressure treated bottom plate. Everything else is spruce. Real simple, basic deal. And also went ahead, got the skids done. Four before post, you can see the radius edge. All right, now we're gonna use the DeWalt cordless drill to drill a one inch hole somewhere about right there. That way we can uh, be able to run a rope through both sides and drag this thing around easily with the side to side. Cordless DeWalt, one inch hole. I'm gonna do that on both ends, in case I need to drag it forward or backwards, it doesn't make a difference, I just move the rope around. All right, now we're basically gonna take the six foot walls we built, carry these over. These are the six foot side walls. Put these on the skid plates. I've already measured 12 inches in. These were eight foot four befores. Six foot wall, gives me 12 inches sticking out of both sides. Gonna find my mark at 12 inches. Line that up, and I'm gonna nail this wall to the skid plate. We'll do that twice. Here's where if you had an extra set of hands, it wouldn't be a bad thing. sidewalls are built. Next thing I'm going to do is cut some cross braces to go across and make this thing five foot wide. Uh, then we'll go from there. And you'll get to see it framed out. All right, so basically these are the two six foot sidewalls attached to the skid plates. I've cut four five foot seven inch two by fours which if you bring them out flush to the edges and nail them that'll give you a five foot opening. So this will be five foot wide, six feet long. I'll show you in a second how we're gonna do the roof. Uh, and I just do a angled slant roof. Uh, hopefully it's tall enough enough slant to keep the goats off of it. Some people do an A-frame or you could do an A-frame if you opted to do that, give it some steeper slope. But for me, I just like simple, quick and easy out of the materials I have on hand. Not a lot of money invested, just a few hours time. I'm gonna nail this off and then you'll get to see it framed up. I'll repeat that.
that on the back side and then we'll close in the back leave this as the open front for the goats to go in and out of i'll put a double double two by four on edge to slope the roof back uh, again real basic real simple easy made out of just materials laying around well i'm going to show you what i do on the roof system and essentially I already had a double two before that was nailed together. So I cut that six foot long for the length of the sidewall, stood it on its end. I'm gonna nail it off there, cut three six foot long two befores that are basically gonna lay flat. I mark those at two and a half inches because remember our sidewall is five foot seven inches to give us that five foot opening. So I have marked these to give a two and a half inch overhang on the front or on either side, I guess that would be two and a half inch overhang on either side. So I marked them at two and a half, that'll go to the edge, basically like that. I'll flip it over so I can see the line on the inside when I go to nail it. But I'm gonna nail that off, one right in the middle, 36 inch on center, right there. X is the center, so I go inch and three quarter to one side or the other, make my mark for the edge of the two before. And that way I'll have three, three across the top to be able to screw my 10 to. All right, took a minute to get it all nailed off. There's the double two before, two and a half inches overhang, front and back. Not a big span for a two before, that's why I lay them flat to give me more surface area to screw my metal to. One in the middle. Another one on the end. I leave these ends open just for ventilation. Uh, I'll just metal up to it and I'll let my overhang run past here. Hindsight what it is, I probably would have let this run on out to the edge. Uh, I may have did that on the last one, didn't do it on this one. Not a big deal. Again, these are just goat shelters. Uh, I do want them to last a long time, but at the same time, they don't have to be perfect. I mentioned before, uh, this project is on building this goat house, goat shelter, if you will. And I am just using things I have accumulated. A little hodgepodge of metal that we're gonna wrap this frame in. Five foot by six foot. I opted to go ahead and put three ribs on the back instead of the two like I originally did, just to have a little more stability. But there you go. We're gonna cut this metal into pieces and assemble it onto here. A quick something that I forgot to do in order to get rid of the sag and the metal in between these two on the roof. I add a piece just nailed flat. They bring it to the same height as the, basically I guess these would be rafters. Um, so I used some of the scrap lumber that was left over off my cut pieces, the dunnage, and I just space it evenly. Leaves a little ventilation, some holes for some ventilation, let the hot air out, maybe a little cool air in. Um, but a little part I left out that I remembered when I went to put the roof on. Basically after nailing in, piecing in those blocking to support the roof, I had a Surprisingly enough, a panel that was already the right length in red and a galvaloon color or galvanized color that's long. So I let it run wild out this end. Even it up here. Tried to get a little overhang on all the way around. And I'm gonna screw everything off. And then I'm going to trim that edge off. Basically, I measured from the edge of the red panel to the end of the galvanizement, so I can cut the drop. Took that measurement, brought it over here, measured from the end to here. Chalk box, I'm gonna pop a line, and then I had to go in between because of the ribs and actually mark it, but, and that's my line I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut it off using, there's the DeWalt fan, you guessed it, 60 volt, DeWalt cordless grinder. Cordless tools are great on the farm. I can't help but love them. As always, safety first.
Use you some cutting goggles, some glasses, something to keep the birds out of your eyes. Just follow the line. Short work, just a few seconds. Had it cut off using that fantastic cutoff tool. Nice even all the way across. Now we're gonna cut the panels to fit the sides. All right, all the cutting's over as far as the two sides. Cut this a little over 12 foot, 12 foot five and a half, 12 foot six foot, 12 foot six inch panel into four sections equal. That would fit on my four sides, so I didn't bother you with the repeating the process. Did it four times. Uh, got two more pieces to cut for the back. I want to show you this, how it was cut. Again, I had a cordless grinder. Love my DeWalt tools. Not a necessity. You could do this with hand snips. You could do it with a pair of power shears, corded. Just what I have on hand, and I don't like running a bunch of power cords and everything else if I can help it. Uh, so. Cordless tools are a wonderful thing. Again, you can do it with basic hand tools, all of this. You can nail it together by hand. You can screw it together with a screw gun. Uh, you don't have to have a nail gun. There's a lot of things you don't need. Uh, I just have those things. So I try to utilize them where I can. All right, gonna line this panel up, screw it off, repeat it down here. Actually gonna line this one up first because this one overlaps, repeat it. Jump over to the other side, do that. To cut two more panels the same width or same height, and I'm gonna install those on the back. Uh, that panel may be a little long and I have to cut it off, we'll see. Uh, you can lay this out any way you want to, change your dimensions, change your size. I like this size, easy to move around, easy to transport, uh, and if I need to, I can stoop down and still get in there and have some room to move. So it's not a bad deal for me. You can do it any way you want to, change the dimensions of the lumber, make it a little larger. one panel screwed off. I'm going to repeat it to this one, work my way to the other side, do that, and I'll do the back, and it'll basically be wrapped up. A few more little parts to show you, and it'll be a done deal. We'll call it a day. Framed up, five foot wide, six feet long. That's the finished side, top with a slope on skids like we talked about. Back, just a couple colors I had. One was a little bit shorter, but my last panel made it work just to give the goats some shelter. And remember the holes I put in the skids? I'm fixing to show you what that's for. All right, well, the goat house is complete. Sorry for the noise in the background. I told you those Holes through the skids were for a purpose. They're for that rope that's attached to that side by side so we can pull this thing out to the pasture. Woo! Work smarter, not harder. And we're off. But as you can see, Super easy. And that, my friend, is a fast, cheap, actually, everything I used was old material or leftovers, so a zero cost goat shelter. It's the second one I made that didn't cost me anything to make other than a couple hours in labor. So I encourage you, use what you have, repurpose. I can promise you the goats don't know the difference and they are appreciative to be able to get out of the weather. I told you the goats love it. Put it under the shade tree. They all come running to check it out. Keep the herd sire. What you tell them, Franco? Yeah. Tell them like and subscribe.